Hello everyone, my name is Tor and welcome or welcome back to Anthropology. Thank you for joining me in today's video. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Farfetch's pre-loved shopping experience, when they got into the pre-loved market, why they got into the pre-loved market, and a little bit about their pricing strategy because I'm sorry, but $540,632 Canadian dollars for this 1989 Chanel elongated clutch bag is ridiculous. And I just wanted to compare a little bit about what I saw on Farfetch's pre-loved site versus another very relevant pre-loved site such as Fashion File and just the general disparity in pricing strategy that they have because Farfetch is crazy. Honestly, their pricing strategy is absolutely bananas. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. I'm going to be pulling some quotes from Vogue a little bit about their what their chief commercial sustainability officer has said about their program. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. All right. So for those that don't know about Farfetch, they are a e-commerce website, a platform, if you will, that pulls from a variety of different boutiques globally around the world to basically be one place that you can purchase goods from a variety of different boutiques. And essentially the name Farfetch, you're going far to fetch items that you may not be able to get in your local market. Now it's primarily used by a lot of boutiques that are maybe like too small to have their own website or that want to sell on a larger global e-commerce platform. So I've used Farfetch in the past. A lot of YouTubers use Farfetch and promote Farfetch as a platform to shop from. And it is a good platform, but I have noticed that sometimes the pricing is crazy and obviously the pricing comes from the fact that they are a platform for other boutiques to sell on but some of them are just totally outlandish totally outrageous and they put the farfetch name in front of them so in may of 2019 farfetch started offering a pre-loved second life type initiative where consumers could sell their products to farfetch and then they would receive a Farfetch credit. Farfetch would then list these items on their Second Life Lux exclusive area. Now they just title it as pre-owned. And you would get a Farfetch credit to use on the website. Now in 2021 is when Farfetch really became noted for this change. And according to Vogue, Farfetch bought Lux exclusive, which was a company that sources secondhand goods and sells them to other brands such as Bestiaire Collective, The Real Real, etc. And according to their chief commercial and sustainability officer, the opportunity is for them to sell new products in addition to pre-owned products, increasing their circularity. So in 2021, the resale industry was estimated to be worth 28 million euros and was predicted to grow by 10 to 20 percent, according to Bain and Company, outpacing the net new luxury industry. They wanted to do this because they wanted to obviously increase their sustainability goals and circularity. They wanted to show that pre-owned goods produced on Second Life could get more circular products within their assortment and increase it by 2030. Baloli, which is their chief commercial and sustainability officer, said, there is an opportunity for brands to understand that they don't need to produce new items or make more products in order to sell or make money. Now, this is a great initiative. I think product circularity is great to not only reduce waste, so reduce the opportunity for people to buy net new products or to have like duplicates because often these products well I think when you're talking in like the luxury space no one's gonna throw a Birkin in a landfill like that's just like not gonna happen so this platform allows people to exchange their goods give them a second life have the opportunity for someone else to purchase them keep the life going because these products are meant to last in theory so this platform gives them that opportunity to get some credit back now it's like all other I would say like resale platforms, you won't get exactly what you paid for it. But what I've noticed that's different about Farfetch is that their prices are significantly higher than a lot of other resale secondhand auctioneer websites. So interestingly, I looked at their annual report to see if they were going to provide a breakdown of what this pre-owned market share was compared to, or what the pre-owned segment of their business or category of their business was in relation to their net new assortment. However, there was nothing in their 2023 annual report. 
However, they did note that it more than doubled between 2019 and 2020. And I did find a report somewhere that it said 343% was the year over year increase. Obviously, if they brought it in 2019, it's not it's going to be starting at zero. So anything up from there is going to be an increase. But some of the examples that I found, which were really outlandish to me, was the Chanel 1989 elongated flap clutch. This one retails for three hundred thousand U.S. dollars, or five hundred forty six hundred and thirty two Canadian dollars, which is actually crazy. Like half a million, more than half a million dollars on a clutch bag from nineteen eighty nine is insane. Like. If you think Chanel prices in the store are bad, like that's crazy. And another one which I wanted to compare, just a standard black Birkin 25. Farfetch has two options. The 2020 version of this retails for 57,984 USD, classic black bag gold hardware. Or for the 2024 version, it retails for 78,730. Now, if you go to other websites such as Fashion File, which I would say is a dominant force in the luxury resale market, especially within the America and North America as a whole. This same bag from 2024 retails for 31345 So that is literally more than half the price of the Farfetch version, which is actually like crazy. $78,000 before tax on a simple black Birkin bag is crazy. That is more than I've seen at any other website. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more unique. I found two versions of the Dalmatian Kelly. I love the Dalmatian Kelly. I think it's very, very interesting. Kylie Jenner has one. On the Farfetch website, they have a 2001 Kelly 28 return in this Dalmatian print for 62,977 USD. Now, if you think that's crazy, it's because it is. If you go on Christie's, they sold a 2000 version of the 32 of this Kelly for 16,250. That's over $30,000, like almost $35,000 in price discrepancy for pretty much the same bag. Now, it doesn't stop there. They've also excluded their categorization to include watches, such as the $400,000 Richard Mill, which is crazy, but also the 2005 Kelly Cellier in metallic gold for $226,979. What do you think of this version of Farfetch's pre-sale market? Because... Obviously, they do sell some things that are more reasonably priced. I went high to low because I was like, what is the most outlandish thing they sell? And there are reasons why people buy pre-loved. Obviously, there's more uniqueness in that you can find things that are not current, that maybe not a lot of people have, that were produced in limited batches. You can buy things that are, you know, already broken in. So you don't have that, like, guilt when you use it the first time. Obviously, increasing product circularity and sustainability is a big thing for some companies, but also consumers wanting to not buy net new, not add to the already existing plethora of material in the world. But sometimes people also buy pre-loved to save a buck, to save a dollar. And you would be better off spending thousands of dollars at the Hermes store, getting a bag that's brand new from the box, a black one even, a gold one, instead of spending $78,000 on Farfetch to buy one that's already been used. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, I'm so curious about their pricing strategy because I'm like, people can't seriously be buying this. If you're already on the pre-loved market, chances are you are a more seasoned consumer. You understand, especially if you're buying Birkins pre-loved, you know the pricing of what they go for and you can shop around. There's a variety of different sites, Best Year Collective, The Real Real, Fashion File, even local consignment stores within whatever city you live in. And you would be able to see that these prices are not reflective of the market. I think Farfetch is sort of out of their mind with this pricing strategy. And they don't say where these items come from. They just say Farfetch pre-owned. So it is unclear to the consumer whether or not these are coming from a boutique that sells pre-loved goods or if this is coming from Farfetch's pre-owned segment within their own business. But I definitely think it's interesting that their pricing strategy is so astronomical like it's more than Sotheby's even more than Christie's which are premier auction houses so let me know what you think let me know if any one of you have bought Farfetch's pre-owned I'd be so curious to know how it came to you whether it came from a specific boutique whether you were satisfied with the price that you paid but yeah what do you think of this price discrepancy obviously pre-love they can do whatever they want they can sell whatever markup they need to 
But it's just insane to me that you can, if you just do one simple click around the internet, you can find the goods that Farfetch is selling for half the price, a third of the price even. So that's my video today. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye, guys.